some of you might see this as a maple tree. Some of you might see this as an arrangement of leaves on a page. Some of you may see this as the tree growing in your own backyard. And to some of you in the audience, you might see this as the source of maple syrup you put on your pancakes in the morning. But as a botanist who studies plants, I see this as an Acer saccharum, a sugar maple, a symbol of North American culture, a perfect representation of time and place, a tool to educate people from all walks of life, and a work of art. But where would you find a specimen like this one? Well, you would find it in a herbarium, a place that stores dried, pressed plant collections, like the one you saw before, filed away by classification, organized in their cabinets and shelves, just like a library. But unlike a library that has many copies of the same book, herbarium specimens are each unique and irreplaceable. Now, about 200 years ago, herbarium specimens were reserved in private collections by the wealthy elite, showing off their wealth and travels around the world as a, almost like a type of souvenir from the places they've lived. Even Charles Darwin had his own herbarium, his own private collection, to show off his journeys on the HMS Beagle. But at the turn of the 20th century, this private collection fell out of favor, and most private collections were absorbed or donated to major botanical institutions and colleges and universities across the country. And at this time, emerged a trailblazing botanist from the University of Cincinnati, Dr. E. Lucy Braun. She was the second woman here at UC to earn her PhD in the sciences. And in her work surveying and researching the eastern forests of North America, she strived to collect herbarium specimens everywhere she went in the name of scientific research to look into the unknown. She did her work in ecology and conservation before these concepts even had a name. And she inspired me to use herbarium specimens in new and unique ways. And just like Dr. Lucy Braun was on a transition from private collection to major botanical institutions, so too are we. At the beginning of the 21st century, there was a push to digitize herbarium specimens that were reserved in the major botanical institutions and colleges and universities, like I said. Imaged and scanned and uploaded online to be available to not just scientists, but to everyday people. And without the process of digitization, my own research wouldn't be possible. I gathered 197 different specimens of Piper arboreum, it's a relative of the black pepper, and the same black pepper you put on your food every day. And I gather these images from various virtual herbaria, much like the New York Botanical Garden CV Star Virtual Herbarium, in my opinion, the most user-friendly. And I gathered these images, and I asked the question, does Piper arboreum have an isolated leaf shape in the islands of the West Indies? Or does it maintain its morphological diversity, such as in mainland South America? And to reword that for you, it's does Piper arboreum have a different leaf shape in the islands, such as Cuba and Jamaica? Or does it have many different leaf shapes, such as in South America? And comparing and contrasting that. And I used an innovative technique called digital leaf morphometrics to do this. Taking scans, having a computer analyze and compare and contrast. And what we found is that the islands, well, compared to the mainland, have a distinct morphology. But when comparing the islands and mainlands together, you could see its morphological diversity. And the point of the study wasn't to track island ecology. It wasn't to prove that that concept exists. It's to show that you could use herbarium specimens to track something greater such as island ecology, something as simple as a two-dimensional leaf on a page and working our way up to something greater. 
And herbarium specimens can be an important tool for research of all kinds. And in the past 20 years, herbarium specimens kind of fallen by the wayside in rise of new genetic taxonomy and the use of genetics in, in, modern, uh, in modern science. But now we can pull genetic information from the dried plant material of herbarium specimens and use it as a tool to assist genetic taxonomy. And herbarium specimens are coming back into the picture, and they're more important than ever. With genetic taxonomy, that's important. But you could also use herbarium specimens for other ways. You can cl track climate change and pollution. Because that plant lived in a certain place at a certain time, its environment has affected it. And you could track and see what pollutant levels are inside that plant from the herbarium specimen. You can gain a window to how that plant lived. And with the information on the label, that could tell you a lot. You could track flowering times throughout history and look at herbarium specimens from the past and then compare them to herbarium specimens today and see how that flowering time has changed and potentially predict when the next flowering time will be. And this could be important to agriculture. Herbarium specimens Looking at herbarium specimens, you could see how people and local cultures from around the world use plants in their everyday lives. And this is known as ethnobotany. We can use ethnobotany and we can use herbarium specimens to find the next medicines of tomorrow. An example of this is foxglove, or digitalis perea. It was used in, in traditional English medicine for the past 700 years. And in the 1780s, an English botanist named William Withering extracted digitalis, which was used to treat dropsy, or swelling from congestive heart failure, and is still used in modern medicine today. And using herbarium specimens, we could look as almost like a window and look into the future medicines of tomorrow, because they could be stored away in herbariums and waiting to be discovered by people on the internet, just like you and me. But most importantly, I feel that herbarium specimens can be used as a tool for education to teach the next scientists of tomorrow. Because of their ease of access and simplicity, herbarium specimens can be used by educators. From elementary students taking a walk in the woods, observing the world around them, to high school students working on their LEAF projects, and college students working on innovative research and discovering new techniques through plants. And this is where you come in. Because herbarium specimens are on the internet, you don't have to be a scientist to access them. And you can use herbarium specimens for whatever you want. And that's really cool. Herbarium specimens can be used by all people. And just as Lucy Braun was at the dawn of ecology and conservation, so too are we. We too are at the dawn of a new science, waiting to be discovered. And these secrets can lie in these herbarium specimens online on the internet. Herbarium specimens are powerful because they can be used as a tool for researchers and educators. And herbarium specimens are awesome because they can be accessed by people all over the world for free. No matter where you are, who you are, what your socioeconomic background is, how old you are, if you're a scientist or not, as long as you have an internet connection and a computer, you can access these specimens. So the next time you're walking through the woods, seeing a leaf on a branch, or something as simple as a small flower, or even that annoying weed growing in your garden. It is a perfect testament to what can grow in that certain time and certain place. And with herbarium specimens, we could prove this. We could show how plants live. So just as Lucy Braun inspired me to use herbarium specimens in new and unique ways, 
I encourage you all to do the same. Thank you.